And you look at the Colts, it's like every week I'm like, all right, this is the week that they're going to kind of have one, they're going to lay an egg. And it's like even if the game starts that way, they find a way to win these football games. Whether or not the Colts make the playoffs is now in their hands. They have three games left, and there's a couple of somewhat silent superstars on the defensive side of the ball that have been a huge catalyst for this team at points in the season. And they're going to have to carry a lot of weight in these last few games as well. But I'm going to get to them later, and in this video, I'm going to talk everything Colts, recap their dominating win over the Steelers, and also talk about their path to the playoffs and why I think they might just be able to pull off some magic in the postseason. But before I begin, I would really appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe. It only takes 5 seconds, plus you can always change your mind. And your support truly does mean the world. Alright, so starting off, real fast, to recap the win over the Steelers, the Colts actually started out pretty slow in this one, with Mitch Trubisky running up the middle for a 1 yard touchdown to make it 6 to nothing. and then at the start of the second quarter, Deontay Johnson caught one to make it 13-0. But it wasn't long after that until the Colts started to get going. They scored their first touchdown of the game on a 16 yard pass to Zach Moss, then they scored their second before halftime on a 14 yard pass to DJ Montgomery to go up 14 to 13. And the second half was literally all Colts. Minshew threw another touchdown and then Matt Gay made 3 straight field goals to get the 30 to 13 W. For the Colts, the landscape of the AFC reveals an interesting scenario. With a record of 8 and 6, they are squarely in the mix, especially considering the situation in the AFC South. They are neck and neck with the Jacksonville Jaguars and Houston Texans, and this division is completely up for grabs for anyone. But the Colts just need to concentrate on their own performance rather than getting distracted by what other teams are doing. According to Advanced Analytics, they have the 6th easiest remaining schedule in the AFC. Their upcoming opponents have a collective winning percentage of 47%, but the crucial question is how they'll manage the final stretch of the season. And last Sunday did not go the Colts way whatsoever in terms of helping them. I mean, there was a 5 minute span where the Houston Texans kicked a game winning field goal in overtime just as the Bears failed on a Hail Mary against the Browns. So all the help that the Colts could have gotten on Sunday, like within a 5 minute span, completely evaporated. And the Browns are starting to separate themselves as the best wildcard team record wise. So it doesn't look like the Colts are catching Cleveland anytime soon whatsoever. But like I said, you know, if we're looking at this remaining schedule, Schedule, the Colts just need to take care of business because if they win out, they have like a 99.9% .9 chance of making the postseason, so they have nothing to worry about. And there's no real juggernaut unbeatable teams in the AFC, so I don't think the seeding matters. And you're gonna have to beat the Ravens anyways at some point to advance far. When it comes to teams below 500, I mean, every single loss they have this year has been to a team at 500 or above 500. So these next two games against Atlanta and against Vegas are two teams below 500, where the Colts, as of right now, are undefeated against those types of teams this year. The Falcons are coming off of a brutal loss to the Carolina Panthers, obviously the worst team in football. Vegas is coming off a really weird two-week stretch, like a really, really weird two-week stretch, where they lost 3 to nothing and then won 63 to 21 against the halfless Chargers, but those are two winnable games still for the Colts. And they can't have a big letdown like they did against the Bengals two weeks ago or like they did against the Saints earlier in the season. Anyways, before I move on, I gotta talk about the news that Tony Brown and Isaiah McKenzie have both been suspended for the rest of the regular season. There were no specifics given as to what they did to receive the suspensions, but both were inactive for the Colts' victory over the Steelers. There's gonna be a standard, and people are going to be held accountable, head coach Shane Steichen told reporters when asked about the situation on Wednesday. McKenzie, in his first season with the Colts after signing with the franchise in free agency following 5 years with the Bills and 13 games played this season, he has caught 11 passes for 82 yards, returned 23 punts for 204 yards, and brought back 6 kicks for 152 yards. McKenzie had his best NFL season last year with Buffalo as he recorded 478 yards from scrimmage and 5 total touchdowns. Anyways, moving on to some good news, after having surgery on an injured thumb, star runner Jonathan Taylor has a chance to potentially suit up against the Falcons. After finally getting the contract he wanted this season, Taylor will push to get back into the swing of Steichen's offense, and he will of course be a big part of their push to get a playoff berth. Also, the Colts will face Taylor Heineke as the starter during the upcoming matchup, so it turns out they won't be traveling there to face Desmond Ritter after all. The 30-year-old, well-traveled veteran has completed 40 
41 of 74 pass attempts for 498 yards with three passing touchdowns and two interceptions during three games for the Falcons in the 2023 campaign. Of course, Heineke is a familiar face for the Colts as he started during week 8 against Indy last year, then as a member of the Washington Commanders. In that start, Heineke completed 23 of 31 pass attempts for 279 passing yards with a touchdown and an interception in a narrow 17-16 Washington win. Neither starting quarterback option appears to be all that of an appealing one for Atlanta, but they're hoping they can catch lightning in a bottle with Heineke and he'll give them some much needed late season life offensively, just one game behind the leading team. Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the NFC South. It has just been an absolutely crazy year for the Colts this season, from losing Anthony Richardson and not having Jonathan Taylor, to now having a chance to win the division with Minshew Magic. Before I end off this video, I gotta talk about a player by the name of Michael Pittman Jr. because he's been so consistent all year, and I'm glad I drafted him in fantasy. And he took a huge and kind of dirty hit in the Steelers game, but as Tom Brady said, there should not have been any suspension. It was just a bad spot to throw the ball. But anyways, this season, Pittman has put up 1,062 yards with 4 touchdowns, and that is with 2 different QBs throwing to him. And I think he's going to build a special connection with Anthony Richardson in the future. That's really all I have to say for this video. Thank you all so much if you made it to this point, and if you enjoyed and haven't yet, make sure to drop a like and subscribe, because your support truly means the world. And also, let me know what you would like to see next, since there is so much going on across the league right now. And until then, I will see you all later.